Hello everyone and welcome back to game week four of the 23-24 PTC Therapeutics Championship where you join myself, Ryan Sipple, for this clash of the power chair titans in a game between league leaders Green Bank and second in the lead Middlesbrough Power Chair Football Club. Let's bring up that league table if we can, just to show how close it is between these two. Green Bank leading the way with 43 points across their 16 games. One 14, drawn one, lost one. Middlesbrough unbeaten, the only team that can boast that accolade in the championship. They join prestigious company with Aspire being the only two teams in the National League yet to go unbeaten. But what a game this promises to be. They're yet to meet in the National League this season. And they're set to face one another yet again in game week five. So that could decide the outcome of the season. Go through the squads very quickly, starting with Green Bank. They have number two, Cody Taylor. Number seven, Gary Little. Number nine, Darren Little. Number 11, Liam Ashton. Number, sorry, number 10, Liam Ashton. Number 11, Ellie Curran. That graphic doesn't have number 30, Jacob Butch Platt, one of their star players, or Luke Kelly. Middlesbrough. Number six, James Found. Number seven, Kath McNichol. Number 10, Carl Forster. Number 39, Philip Dawes. Number 49, Ellie Renton. It doesn't look like Luke Kelly is here for this fixture which could be incredibly significant for the outcome. Cody Taylor, Jacob Butchplatt, Liam Ashton and Ellie Curran comprise the starting four of Green Bank. James Found, Kath McNichol, Philip Dawes and Kyle Forster, that of Middlesbrough. So first versus second in the league. Steve Crump, our central official for this one. Looks like Middlesbrough will have kickoff via Kath McNichol. And we are underway. Brilliant early work from Carl Forster. Just, just bypass Ellie Curran. And Jacob Butchplatt 
sees it out of danger. Thank you to all that have tuned in to this game and others across game week four of the championship. It really is proving to be one of the best seasons to date. This battle at the top between Greenbank and Middlesbrough is complemented by three, four, five, six or so teams competing for that third place playoff as Kath McNichol fires it diagonally across the face of goal. Carl Forster unable to meet it. But as has always been the case with Greenbank in dominant in game week four. Yet to falter victories over Manchester City, Muscle Warriors, West Bromwich Albion Dudley before meeting their most closely matched rivals, Middlesbrough, as Jacob Butch Platt is going to try and dribble over the line, met by Kath McNichol. Kath McNichol down to Carl Forster. Nice diagonal ball across to Philip Dawes. Liam Ashton into Butch Platt. No substitutes at the disposal of Jerry Kinsella and Marcus Harrison. The Green Bank PFC coaches. Live on court A currently. So United are taking on T side. Nil nil that one at present. As Jacob Butch Platt and Carl Forster, two of the best young players in the National League, battle one another. Philip Dawes is have, gonna have to vacate that space quickly. Steve Crump had his whistle in his mouth. We just look at the top six teams of the championship division. You'll see how close it is. Green Bank, it's a live table, so uh, adding a point for a potential draw here. Green Bank on 44, Middlesbrough on 39. Middlesbrough could close the gap significantly with a win here. Leeds Dynamos currently in third on goal difference. Green Bank secured an impressive 7-0 victory over Manchester City yesterday. Not just that, of their seven goals, Luke Kelly either created or scored, contributed in every one of the seven finishes. Truly has been an absolutely incredible addition to Green Bank's side. Almost certainly the favourite to secure championship play of the season, despite a full weekend left to be played. Carl Forster gets the round of applause from Carolyn Bean, the Middlesbrough coach. Touching on Luke Kelly and his influence. You look at how prolific their players have been. Liam Ashton on 23 goals, leading the way at the top of the top goal scorer standings. Luke Kelly on 18 and Jacob Butch Platt on 17. Some of them individual accolades are greater than some collective teams in the championship division. We look at Middlesbrough and how they're faring in the goal tallies. None of their squad yet on double digits. Carl Forster the closest, just one away on nine. James Found on six as a designated goalkeeper. It's an impressive accumulation of finishes. I think he is responsible for penalties. So a number of his goals have come from that. Philip Dawes on five. Steve Crump just going over to Kath McNichol to have a word before this free kick is taken. 
Catherine McNichol into Carl Fawcett by passes himself and Liam Ashton. Cody Taylor called into defensive duties as the designated goalkeeper of Greenbank. Jacob butch -Platt has Ellie Curran in space on the right-hand wing. Off the front of Kath McNichols' chair. Butch Platt into Liam Ashton. Out for a Middlesbrough ball. If there's ever a good opportunity to try and beat Greenbank now is surely it for Middlesbrough. The depleted squad here on Sunday afternoon as Ellie Curran fires an effort diagonally across the face of the Middlesbrough box. Warning signs still there. Talking about absentees, Middlesbrough without two of their key players in Umar Hanif and Sam Mackay as well as Philip Dawes does well to control that ball. Very even in the opening seven or so minutes. Good work from Jacob Butch Platt. Probably my favourite player in the championship. So talented and no doubt if he carries on his current trajectory will almost certainly represent his country one day. He's just entered the FA's regional emergent talent programme. With possession of the ball now, Liam Ashton trying to return the pass to his teammate, Cole Forster, comes across to Limit the opportunities of the Green Bank attack. Strong play from Carl Forster. Just falls kindly to Liam Ashton, but Carl Forster dispossesses and a chance to break now. Philip Dawes in attack. Cody Taylor has to be alert. Strong play from Carl Forster. Neither player wants to yield in their pursuit of possession. Flicked back to Kath McNichol. She has to be careful because Liam Ashton's positioned really well to prevent her completing that rotated spin kick. James found yet to have any real involvement. That will certainly please Carolyn Bean. The less he's involved means the less Greenbank are attacking. He may have to contribute defensively here. As Liam Ashton is edging his way up the court. Ellie Curran locked in that top right-hand corner. Jacob Butch Platt flicks it to Liam Ashton. Two on one in favour of Greenbank. James Found and Kath McNichol probably a metre away from one another. Arguably the most credible opportunity for league leaders to score in the game thus far. Indirect free kick to be taken by Jacob Butch Platt. Liam Ashton trying to position his chair between James Found and Kath McNichol. Ellie Curran to the right hand side of the box. Liam Ashton now just take a position on the left and Ellie Curran just edges closer to that right hand post. Jacob Butch Platt goes for Ashton. Back to Butch Platt. Ashton. Touch from Carl Forster. Out of play for a Middlesbrough ball. James Found, met by Butch Platt.
flicked towards Philip Dawes, who's been fairly isolated in the opening 10 minutes. Out of play for a greenback ball, despite Carl Forster's appeals. Still nil-nil on the court A between Sale United and Teesside Steel. Here we have the most anticipated fixture of the championship season though so far between first Greenbank and second Middlesbrough. Should Middlesbrough win both matchups against their Northwest rivals? They will leapfrog them in the championship standing, something they haven't been able to do all season long. But with Marcus Harrison guiding this team, one of the leading players anywhere in the world, adding the quality of Luke Kelly, who's just shone in the championship. They look almost certain to gain promotion to the Premiership. So, so intrigued to see how they fare against the likes of West Brom, Spire, Teesside, Newcastle and others. But... They haven't secured it yet. Still, this game and others across game week five. But they're yet to really falter. As mentioned earlier, one draw and one loss for Greenbank in the season so far. The draw came at the hands of Leeds Dynamos. Confirmation of that substitute in just a few moments' time. Their only defeat coming at the hands of West Bromwich Albion Dudley, who they secured a fairly comprehensive victory over earlier today as Liam Ashton guides it over to Ellie Curran. She's going to have an attempt, can't quite get the connection or timing to trouble James Found in the Middlesbrough goal. Ellie Renton has come on in place of Philip Dawes. Confirmation of that substitute on your screens now. Ashton into Butch Platt. Weeds his way round, Carl Forster. Very congested in that final third. 13 and a half minutes played. Ashton back to Butch Platt. Two on one awarded in favour of Middlesbrough. Green Bank certainly the more attacking of the two teams. But nothing to really threat James found in the Middlesbrough goal. Likewise, Cody Taylor. Fairly isolated, uninvolved, but has been alert when needed. Ashton looking for Ellie Curran. Attempt from Ellie Curran wide of the left hand post. James found Carl Forster brilliant diagonal ball to Ellie Renton on the right back to Kath McNichol Carl Forster in space but good chair positioning from Jacob Butch Platt to prevent that option
Kath McNichol trying to find Cole Forster. Very evenly matched in the first half. Ashton over to Ellie Curran. Cut out by James Found. Opportunity to break. Carl Forster in support to James Found's right. Good work from the Green Bank number 30 there. Made the greatest effort to keep it in, so Pete Westmoreland awards it in Green Bank's favour. And now an opportunity. Ellie Renton guides it goal bound. Cody Taylor has to prevent the initial effort. The danger still present via Carl Forster. Four minutes left to be played. Brilliant work from the Green Bank number two. Free kick for Green Bank. Three and a half minutes left to be played of this first half. Green Bank nil, Middlesbrough nil. Can Jacob Butchblatt add to his 17 goals in the season thus far? Also, Liam Ashton with 23 goals to his name. Three of the top five top goal scorers being Green Banks. Just take that graphic off while we take this free kick. Ashton into Butch Black over to Ellie Curran who guides it over the line. 17 minutes gone. Ellie Curran brilliantly guides the ball over the line. A well worked set piece went through Jacob Butch Black, Liam Ashton, eventually to Ellie Curran who scores the opening goal of the game. Greenbank one, Middlesbrough nil. There's me talking about Luke Kelly, Jacob Butch Platt and Liam Ashton being lethal in front of goal and providing the firepower to this title charge. Ellie Curran needs to be very much considered in that same context. Been such an important player to Green Bank this season as she provides a nice ball over to Liam Ashton on the right. And Green Bank not resting on their laurels, looking to build on this scoreline in the final few minutes of this first half. Carl Forster keeps it in play, met by Butch Platt. Approaching the final minute. Green Bank in the driving seat. I'll bring you the full table at the signalling of half time. I bring up just the mini scoreboard of the top six teams in the division. You will clearly see that Green Bank will extend their gap to eight points with a win here and would almost certainly make them strong favourites to lift the championship. Barring no late falters in game week five. You'll also have teams such as Leeds Dynamos and Villa Rockets Lions. Only four points off of Middlesbrough. Looking to make up ground. Maybe even secure one of those two automatic promotion spots. Well, sorry, only one. Because, of course, with Green Bank's dominance, they will have one of the two available. Cole Forster with the corner kick. A goal here would delight Carolyn Bean and Middlesbrough on the eve of half time. Final 10 seconds. Contact foul, direct free kick to Middlesbrough. 
We've had the regulation 20, so now into any additional time. Carl Forster to take. Kath McNichol positions herself in the box. Elite Renton at the back post. Carl Forster just communicating with Kath McNichol as to where he wants her placed for this set piece. We saw Greenback score with a brilliant set piece about five or ten minutes ago. Guided out of danger and play respectively. Approaching one minute additional time into the box to the back of Liam Ashton's chair going to manage this and just try and get it up the court half time Greenbank 1 Middlesbrough nil. Ellie Curran the goal scorer after a really well worked set piece if we look at the league table obviously Greenbank have far the better goal difference plus 65 only conceded six across their 17 games so far scoring 71 so well over double that of Middlesbrough but 46 points from 17 games that obviously a live table so takes into consideration this score line and potential win for the northwest side 17 games played, 15 wins, one draw, one loss. Where Middlesbrough have really faltered is where is them draws. They had converted a few of them into wins. No doubt they would have narrowed the gap. Leeds Dynamos with a game in hand on Middlesbrough. They're playing West Bromwich Albion Dudley later on this afternoon but a win for Dynamos and a loss for Middlesbrough here would see them lessen that gap to three points I believe the two are to meet in game week five so so significant if we get up the top goal scorers of the wider championship division you'll see it's dominant from Greenbank Liam Ashton on 23 Luke Kelly on 18 and Jacob Butch Platt on 17. So Liam Ashton has more than double that of the closest challenger not being a teammate. So full credit to them. But half time in this fixture between Middlesbrough and Greenbank. Join me shortly for the second half.
Hello everyone and welcome back. Game week four of the 23-24 PTC Therapeutics Championship where you join myself, Ryan Sipple, for this Clash of the Titans. First beat second, Green Bank versus Middlesbrough. As you can see on your screens, Green Bank currently boasting a one goal advantage scored by Ellie Curran in the first half putting themselves firmly in the driving seat to secure the championship crown. Still one weekend of action left to be played in June, but this certainly cannot help their aspirations of lifting the National League Championship for the first time in their history. It's a busy five game weekend for Green Bank in June and what a tough weekend it will be as well so not necessarily a formality I'm just going off the momentum that they've already created they've been they've steamrolled pretty much all opposition in their path but this the final game of their game week four they start game week five against Middlesbrough. So back-to-back -back games against Middlesbrough before playing Villa, Rockets, Lions, Teesside Steel, AFC Bournemouth Warriors and Leeds Dynamos. Certainly talking for Villa, Rockets, Lions, Teesside Steel and Leeds Dynamos. They will all be hoping to be in contention for that third place playoff as well. So a lot of tough football left to be played. Middlesbrough, likewise, very tough. Game week five, they start, of course, against Green Bank before playing Leeds Dynamos, Nottingham Forest, West Bromwich Albion Dudley and AFC Bournemouth Warriors. But beyond any one team or individual, this season's championship has been absolutely sensational. I'll quickly bring up the league table you can just bypass Green Bank and Middlesbrough in first and second. You see Leeds Dynamos, Villa Rockets Lions, both on 32 points apiece. Dudley and Norwich on 29 apiece. Muscle Warriors on 27. Teesside still on 25. The fact that only seven points separate third and eighth hopefully speaks volumes to the overall quality in the division. Sal United have surpassed expectations. Manchester City competing in the National League for the first season have been absolutely superb. I think that table is incorrect. Manchester City have only secured one win but have a draw to their name following that nil-nil fixture against AFC Bournemouth Warrior is earlier today. So they'll sit on four points, I believe. But it's just such a brilliant division. It really is. And Green Bank are leading the way at the summit. Got the thumbs up from goalkeepers. And we are back underway for the second half. Unchanged from the teams that finished the first half. Starting with Green Bank, they have Cody Taylor in goal. Liam Ashton, Jacob Butchplatt and the goal scorer Ellie Curran. And for Middlesbrough, their challengers, James Found, Kath McNichol, Ellie Renton and Kyle Forster. Green Bank have no substitutes at their disposal. Unfortunate to be without the superstar that is Luke Kelly. But I'm sure he'll be back for game week five. Ellie Renton has an attempt at goal. James Found advanced out of his box to try and create something for Middlesbrough. Like complacency, gifting possession to Carl Forster there. Wasn't able to generate an opportunity, but they won't want to be gifting Middlesbrough anything. 
There's still a lot of football left to be played in this game and should Middlesbrough turn the tide and manage to turn this 1-0 deficit into a potential advantage, the title would still be in their hands. Jacob Butch Platt into Kath McNichol. Brilliant work from the young number 30 for Greenbank. Met quickly by James Found, who weaves his way out of danger. Greenbank ball. Butch Platt to take. Ellie Curran rooted to that right hand post. Just cushions it into the side of the Middlesbrough defenders and a short clearance from James Found. Turns defence into attack. Out of play for a goal kick. Nil nil on the game. On court A. Sal United against Teesside Steel. This, the penultimate game of game week four on court A and court B. Next up, I think we have Leeds Dynamos versus West Bromwich Albion Dudley. Really significant for that third place playoff. And at the other end of the table, I believe, Manchester City are taking on Nottingham Forest. 11th versus 12th. Out of play for a Middlesbrough ball. Steve Crump just coming over to Jeff Lewis. He's assistant on the right-hand side. So Catherine Nickel to take down to Cole Forster. Quickly taken. Cole Forster not set to receive that ball. Frustrating. For Middlesbrough, who will need to capitalise on occasions like that. We saw Greenbank do it at a set piece in the first half. Out of play for a Greenbank ball. Jacob Butch Platt to take. Well, he's certainly set up to. He will be the receiver to this ball from Liam Ashton. Controlled. This bottom left-hand corner. Being coached by Marcus Harrison. He certainly gives me the vibes of Marcus Harrison, Jacob Butch Platt. You can tell that Marcus has really taken him under his wing and is helping his game develop significantly. And I certainly don't say it lightly that I feel that he will one day put on the shirt of England. Kath <laughs> McNichol. Trying to weave past Jacob Butch Platt and out of danger. Still very much live. Great to see on the YouTube, Gary Mackay mentioning Sam and the fact that he will be back in action soon after a major operation. Oh, his health and welfare is the ultimate priority. 
but another one of the most young, talented, upcoming players in the country will only help Middlesbrough when he's back, if they're able to secure promotion or not. I have no doubt that he will be significant to their success next season. The exact same can be applied to Uma Hanif, another one of the leading players in the championship, will be in contention for potential accolades and awards, despite being absent for a number of weekends. This is a fantastic battle between these two, James Found and Jacob Butch Platt. Down to Ellie Renton, pick off, no doubt intended for James Found, but locked up well by Butch Platt, who seems to be everywhere at the moment. An opportunity here, Carl Forster over to Ellie Renton and millimetres away from making contact with that ball. The front bumper would have been used to try and guide it past Cody Taylor in the Green Bank goal. Unfortunately for her and her team, just wide on that occasion. The warning signs are certainly present. Middlesbrough have almost certainly grown into the game. Arguably been the better of the two teams in this second half. Just that set piece from scored by Ellie Curran in the first, the separating factor. Looks like there has been a goal on court A. Should be able to bring you that one. And I, I believe Sal United have gone one goal up against Teesside Steel. What a result that would be for the Manchester Bay side if they're able to see out the last six minutes of that one. We have just over 11 left in this one. Middlesbrough will still believe they can get back into this. Whilst a win would be the best result for them in pursuit of winning the championship, a draw would still mean they can influence the overall outcome of the 23-24 season. Carl Forcer advances on Cody Taylor in the Green Bank goal. Liam Ashton to take. Carl Forster lets that go, switched by Kath McNichol beautifully. An attempt from Ellie Renton doesn't have any real power to trouble. Cody Taylor. Yeah, nice weaving play. That's when I get shades of Marcus Harrison when Jacob Butch Platt adopts his dribbling game. Middlesbrough come away with the ball on that occasion. Free kick. Looks like James Found will take. Have to be careful about leaving gaps in behind. Ellie Curran will no doubt be ready to pounce if the ball is to come in her vicinity. Forster into the back wheel of Jacob Butch Platt. Less than 10 minutes remaining. They get a substitute. Only one for either of these two teams. So it will be made by Middlesbrough. Philip Dawes re entering the action. Ellie Renton, the player coming off. A 
very deep kick in for Greenbank. Liam Ashton will want to try and relieve pressure on his defence and get it as far up the court as is possible. Nicely left from Butch Platt, who just bypasses Carl Forster. Met by a very stubborn Catherine McNichol. McNichol into Carl Forster, tries to control it, too much pace. Liam Ashton. Middlesbrough certainly posing one of the most stubborn oppositions that Green Bank have faced all season. As mentioned earlier, they have faltered in the season it's thus far. Green Bank did lose 2-1 two, two to West Bromwich Albion Dudley and a draw against Leeds Dynamos. This would be Middlesbrough's first defeat of the season. Five draws or four draws is where they've ultimately dropped points in their pursuit of championship glory. Over to Philip Dawes who's going to try and force it over the line but calmly and coolly cleared by Butch Platt into the box Steve Crump Deems that excessive force from Cody Taylor. So with six minutes left to be played, we've got a direct free kick right on the edge of the Green Bank box. Really intrigued to see what they do here. Almost certainly the best opportunity to find a goal all game. James Found has come up to take this set piece. One of the best ball strikers in the Middlesbrough squad. Normally has responsibility with penalties. He has Cole Forster on the right-hand side of the post. Direct, remember, he can go for goal himself. Wherever he opts to try and squeeze it between the gap of Cody Taylor and Jacob Butch Platt. Butch Platt too quick to move there, so... Another attempt for James Found. Yet yeah, there's two options. Off the side of Carl Forster's jail. In the gap. Brilliantly defended by Cody Taylor. It remains Greenbank 1. Middlesbrough 0. Butch Platt with the greater intent to keep that in play. Not before. Set ball was awarded by Steve Crump. The ball must have been trapped between Forster and Platt. Set ball. Butch Platt certainly gets the better of it in that occasion. Carl Forster comes across to limit the advancement. Liam Ashton not quick enough in vacating that space, was caught sleeping slightly. Shakes his head in disapproval. I think he more than anyone knows could have done better to avoid that. Still indirect free kick. Taken by Kath McNichol over to Carl Forster. Rotated spin kick off the front of Philip Dawes' chair. Out of play for a green bank ball. 
full-time on court A. So United, I believe, have secured three points against Teesside Steel. Definitely their best victory of the season. We'll see the full table at the conclusion of this one. As Butch Platt controls it. A little bit of contact with Kath McNichol. Allowed to continue from Steve Crump. Good officiating. Time is on. Greenbank side. Won't have any problems with it just being locked up deep into the Middlesbrough half. Only a one goal margin separating these two teams. Ricochets towards Carl Forster out of play for a green bank ball. I'm pushed for a player of the match. It's extremely hard to look beyond Jacob Butch Platt. Brilliant goal for Ellie Curran, but she's been very isolated for the majority of this game. Butch Platt so influential in attack. Such a solid foundation in defence for the whole team to build on and the context that this is a team without Luke Kelly, arguably the best player in the championship. I know one thing's for certain, I would love to see both of these two teams competing in the 24-25 Premiership. It's no less than both of them deserve. They still have work to do in game week five of the PTC Therapeutics Championship. But just from their results, performances, attitude and application across the 23-24 campaign, I hope to see them in the top flight facing top opposition. Into the box, ricochets kindly to Carl Forster. James found now with a late rally, approaching the final minute of normal time. to the box from James Found. Challenge until the very end. Yellow card. Very late on. For Cody Taylor, I believe. James found is okay. Took the brunt of that challenge from the Green Bank goalkeeper. Gonna tick into additional time. And we have a direct free kick, which will be probably one of the last major passages of play in this second half. Once James found is okay to continue while that is being addressed. Let's bring up the top six table and see what this potential win could do for Green Bank. Extend their gap at the top to eight points. You'll also have teams in third, fourth and fifth. Looking at Middlesbrough, wondering if they can snatch that automatic promotion spot out of their grasp. These two do face one another. The first game in game week five of the PTC Therapeutics Championship. A lengthy delay here as James Found just seeks a little bit of medical attention.
deep into additional time. Looks like he will be okay to continue. Not sure how much time Steve Crump will add on. But a direct free kick will resume play. Kath McNichol to take. Carl Forster positioning himself between Jacob Butch Platt and Cody Taylor. Philip Dawes to the left-hand side of the left post. Fired goal bound and assured clearance. And Ellie Curran has an opportunity to double herself and her team's advantage. out of play for a green bank ball Liam Ashton to take Jacob Butch Platt the closest option in support three minutes into additional time Ashton into Butch Platt. Out of play. Middlesbrough ball. Can they have one last chance? Defensively speaking, Green Bank have been very impressive. Little has troubled them across this fixture. So they'll do incredibly well to trouble Cody Taylor in the green bank goal now but never say never as jacob butch Platt clears out of danger middlesbrough edging their way up the court now approaching four minutes over the 40. into carl forster pick off to philip Dawes. can't quite get the angle to recycle the attack carl, carl forster gets it via james found in the end and that will be the last action of the game green bank one middlesbrough nil single ellie current goal in the first half ensures green bank assert their dominance at the top of the ptc therapeutics championship standings let's get confirmation of the league table on your screens now green bank on 46 points an eight goal buffer over middlesbrough now with a tough game week five ahead. It's not over yet, but it's certainly theirs to lose. Commiserations to Middlesbrough. They will still have dreams of automatic promotion. They won't want to falter or, and let any of the teams below them catch them up for that automatic promotion spot. But thank you to all that have joined me for this one. Next up on court B, a battle at the bottom. Manchester City take on Nottingham Forest and on court A, Leeds Dynamos take on West Bromwich, Albion Dudley. A win for Leeds Dynamos with their game in hand would see them go within three of Middlesbrough and put a little bit of a gap between themselves and Villa Rockets. Joint on points with them currently. Dudley could match them both with a win and a more favourable goal difference. So thank you to all that have joined me for this one. Be back shortly for the next game on Court B.